I'll proudly stand for. The founding of our brave U.S. Army. And last but certainly not least, we would like to wish the President a very, very happy birthday. And if I do say so, I don't think he looks a day over 35. And with that, I'll take your questions. <laughs> a little sucking up is probably never bad, Kevin. <laughs> Sir, thank you. If you, uh, if you would please comment on the recently released IG report, your impressions of what you've read so far, and have you had an opportunity to discuss with the President the New York Attorney General's idea of of uh, suing the uh, Trump Foundation to have it shut down in the state of New York? Uh, the president was briefed on the IG report earlier today, and it reaffirmed the president's suspicions about Comey's conduct and the political bias among some of the members of the FBI. Director Ray, as you know, will be holding a press conference later this afternoon, and we'd encourage you to tune in for specific questions. Uh, as to your other question, um, the president has tweeted about this uh, specifically earlier today. The foundation raised $18 million while giving $19 million to charity uh, while virtually having zero expenses. The previous New York AG, who was forced to retire in disgrace, made its stated mission to use this matter to advance its own political gain, and the current acting New York AG has stated that battling the White House is the most important job she's ever done. Uh, that sounds uh, outrageously biased and certainly problematic. Um, and very concerning. Cecilia. Sarah, in the State of the Union, the president had some really harsh words for North Korea. He said no regime has oppressed its own citizens more brutally than North Korea. Why is he now downplaying North Korea's horrific atrocities? The president hasn't downplayed. Uh, like you said, the president has raided uh, North Korea's human rights record uh, and some of the abuses of the North Korean regime in a number of occasions. He also raised them at the summit uh, that took place earlier this week. But the focus of the summit was denuclearization and peace on the peninsula. And that was the purpose of the president's conversation. And that was the focus of what took place there. But when he Marla. Yeah. Rights on Fox News, he said a lot of other people have done some really bad things. How is that not downplaying the atrocities? Uh, again, certainly that's a factual statement. A lot of people have done some bad things. However, the president has ignored uh, the bad things that have been done by the North Korean regime. He's directly called it out on a number of occasions, as you yourself mentioned, uh, and he brought it up at the summit. And again, the purpose of the summit was to focus on denuclearization and looking towards that brighter future, and that was what the president was trying to do. Margaret? Thank you, Sarah. Um, could you confirm uh, that there is a trade principles meeting today, that there are Chinese tariffs coming tomorrow? And there was a report that Somewhere in the so a lot of questions. We'll go one at a time. It's First, all, it's the same. Uh, okay. yes, there is a uh, trade meeting today. Uh, in terms of any announcements, uh, I'll keep you posted when we have something to announce. Third, third part of my part question is: uh, there has been a report that part of part uh, question. that 800 to 900 Chinese products would be on that tariff list. It seems like quite a high number, even though I guess the highest number is 1,300. But even if you're not ready to roll out the whole thing, if that number is higher than it really is, could you, could you tell us now? Uh, well, since I'm not making any announcements, it would be hard for me to give details of an announcement that we're not quite ready to make. Whether or not we will, we'll certainly keep you posted. Uh, but beyond that, I can't get into any details. David? Thank you, Sarah. Um, two questions, if you don't mind. Uh, the President said earlier this week that he did speak with Kim Jong-un about human rights abuses. Can you tell us exactly what areas of concern they talked about it? Was it the gulag work camps, torture, public executions, the lack of freedom of religion of the press, kidnapping, women's rights? What did they actually talk about? Uh, again, they covered a number of different topics, uh, a couple that you listed. I'm not going to get into all of the details of their private conversation, but I can tell you, as the president has already publicly stated, that he did bring up uh, human rights abuses of the North Korean regime. And then, Jim, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you too. I did say too. Uh, Rudy Giuliani spent 20 minutes today talking with one of our, our reporters about his love life and proclaim that, and I think his words, he's not going to be a priest if he's separated from his third wife. I, has this become too big of a distraction to the point 
where the president would consider going to get another lawyer. And then also on that, he said his ex, soon to be ex, Judith, called the president last week. Can you tell us what they talked about? Uh, I'm not today or tomorrow or at any point ever going to comment on Rudy Giuliani's love life. Uh, I will be glad to leave that to you and uh, the reporter that spoke with him. And I'm not aware of a call and don't have any information on that. Jim? Sir, can you tell us why uh, the president saluted the North Koreans when he was over in Singapore? Uh, it's a common courtesy when a uh, military official from another government salutes that you return that. Can I just ask a second question, completely unrelated, on the uh, children who are being separated from their families as they come across the border. Uh, the Attorney General earlier today said that uh, somehow there's a justification for this in the Bible. Uh, where does it say in the Bible that it's moral uh, to take children away from their mothers? Uh, I'm not aware of the Attorney General's comments or uh, what he would be referencing. Uh, I can say that uh, it is very biblical to enforce the law. Uh, that is actually repeated a number of times throughout the Bible. Well, However, Bible this uh, uh, hold on, Jim, okay if you'll let me finish. Uh, again, I'm not going to comment on the attorney specific comments that I haven't you just seen. Said it's in the Bible to That's follow not the what law. I said, and I, I know it's hard for you to understand. Um, even short sentences, I guess, but and please don't take my words out of context. But the separation of illegal fam alien families is the product of the same legal loopholes that Democrats refuse to close. And these laws are the same that have been on the books for over a decade. And the president is simply enforcing them. Policy to take children away from their parents. Uh, but can it's you imagine a the policy that to these follow children must be going through the when they come across the border Jim. and they're with their parents, and then suddenly they're pulled away from their parents? Why is the government Doing this. Because it's the law, and that's what the law states. It's not, it doesn't and have to be the, the law. law you guys don't have to do that. It's, it's, you're it's right, your it policy. doesn't have to be the law. And the president has actually called on Democrats in Congress to fix those loopholes. The Democrats have failed to come to the table, failed to help this president close these loopholes and fix this problem. We don't want this to be a problem. The president has tried to address it a number of occasions. We've laid out a proposal, and Democrats simply refuse to do their job and fix the problem. Paula. Go ahead. Sorry, Jim, I've given you enough. Two questions. Um, first of all, there is no law that requires families to be separated at the border. This was the administration's choice to move from civil matters and immigration onto criminal, to criminally prosecute people who come across the border illegally and therefore you have to separate families. So why did the administration find that this was necessary? And if it continues to not have much of a deterrent effect, will you continue this policy? Again, the laws are the ones that have been on the books for over a decade, and the president is enforcing them. We would like to fix the broken system that our immigration uh, and fix our immigration problem. However, until Democrats are willing to actually fix this problem, uh, it's going to continue. But, but we would like to see it fixed. Does Jill. take responsibility for its policy change from civil, handling them as civil matters to criminal it's prosecution? It's not a policy change to enforce Absolutely. the law. That's been, that's been this administration's policy since the no, day we got here. In April that he was going to move it's, from handling it as a civil it matter It has been our administration's policy. Our administration said it was a deterrent. They're separating families to deter people from coming here illegally. Our administration has had the same position since we started uh, on day one that we were going to enforce the law. I know it was something that wasn't high on the priority list in the previous administration, but it is on ours. We're a country of law and order, and we're enforcing the law and protecting our borders. We would like to fix these loopholes, and if Democrats want to get serious about it instead of playing political games, they're welcome to come here and sit down with the president and actually do something about you're it. A Jill. Parent. Don't you have any empathy? Jill, go ahead. Come on, Sarah. You're a parent. Don't you have any empathy? for what these people are going through. Jill. They have less than Brian, you do. Guys, Sarah, come on. Settle down. Seriously. Seriously. I'm trying to be serious, but I'm not going to have you, you yell out a term. Jill, please call. It's a law, and, and they have, th these people have nothing. They hey, Brian, I know you want to get some more TV it's time, but that's that. not what it's this not is about. about I want to recognize you. you. The question, Go ahead, Sarah. Jill. Honestly, answer Good the question. question. It's a serious question. These people <laughs> have nothing. They come to the border with nothing, and you throw children in cages. You're a parent. You're a parent of young children. Don't you have any empathy for what they go through? Jill, go ahead. Two questions for you. Firstly, does the president really believe that Crimea is part of Russia because everyone there speaks Russian? And the second question, um, the president had said that Kim Jong-un told him that North Korea is destroying a Let me major answer your first question. I'm not aware of any comment like that. Um, I know it's been reported, but I'm not going to comment on a 
private conversation I wasn't a part of that I don't have information on. Second part. Um, so the president said that Kim Jong-un had told him that North Korea was working to destroy a major missile engine testing site. Is that the Sohei site, as it's sometimes referred to? Uh, we'll have specific details uh, later. Uh, we're working with the Department of Defense, and we'll make sure we get you guys that information. Yeah. Trey, yeah. Talking about Thanks, today? Two, sorry, Trey, go two ahead. Two questions on the IG report. Earlier this year, the president suggested that the DOJ Inspector General Michael Horowitz uh, was, quote, an Obama guy. Uh, how does the president view Horowitz today, and does he feel that this investigation was thorough? Uh, again, the president uh, thinks that this report reaffirms the suspicions that he had about Comey. Uh, and Director Ray is going to hold a press conference later today, and I would encourage you to tune in for that. The uh, text message exchange between sorry, go ahead, Trip. Uh, the text message exchange uh, highlighted in the report uh, between Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. Uh, ultimately, the FBI agent Peter Strzok said, uh, "We'll stop it," and that he was referring to candidate Trump becoming president. Um, did the president have any reaction to this information uh, when you spoke with him after he was briefed today? Uh, certainly, again, causes a great deal of concern and I think points out the political bias that the president's been talking about uh, and that has been repeatedly mentioned uh, from this administration that we found to be a, a huge problem, and we're glad they're looking into it. Kristen. Sarah, thank you. Did the president or anyone else use funds Trump from, from the Trump Foundation to pay for personal business or campaigns? Uh, I'm not aware of any of that taking place. Would you definitively say no? Uh, again, I'm not aware of it, and I'd have to get more information, but I would refer you to the Trump Foundation have for that specific thing. Uh, I haven't spoken to him about that specifically. Uh, let me just follow up with you. President Trump said several months ago he doesn't think Michael Cohen is going to flip. Is that still the case? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of your question. President Trump tweeted several months ago that he doesn't think that Michael Cohen is going to flip. Does he still think that's the case? Uh, I would refer you back to the president's comment. John? Yeah, two questions. Please, Sarah, and thank you. Uh, first, uh, there have been reports on almost a daily basis and in punctilious detail about EPA had Scott Pruitt doing things that border on the unethical and almost on a daily basis Republican members of Congress call for his resignation. What is his status within the administration, and does the president have confidence in him to remain as administrator? Uh, certainly, we have some uh, areas of concern in some of these allegations, but I don't have any personnel announcements at this point. The question Sorry. is, um, Congressman Mark Sanford blamed the president's tweet uh, as the final straw uh, in his defeat, making him the second Republican House member to go down to defeat. This is the first time in 48 years a sitting president has opposed a member of Congress of his own party. Does the president intend to speak out for primary challenges to other critics of him within the Congress? And if so, who? Uh, I don't have any announcements on uh, any candidates that the president may or may not endorse and wouldn't be able to address that from this venue either. Yes. Sorry, I'll sorry, that's right, Mara, I'll come back to you. I appreciate it. Two questions. First, um, on the two immigration bills that the House is considering, does the president have a preference for one over the other, or are both just fine with him? And then I have another one. The president's already laid out a proposal that closes the legal loopholes and provides the resources to secure our border. If the process leads to a permanent solution as outlined by the president, then we would support it. Those two, those two uh, again, we've laid there. out what we want to see, you and if this gets to a permanent solution, then we would support it. Right. And another question about immigration. You blame the Democrats for not closing the loopholes. Republicans control both houses of Congress, and despite the president's repeated preference for Mitch McConnell to get rid of the legislative filibuster so they could pass something without Democratic votes, they have not done that. So don't Republicans take some responsibility for the immigration Look, laws? Look, if a handful of Democrats wanted to solve this problem, we could quickly get it done. But they don't. And they've refused to come to the table and actually be part of a solution instead of just playing political games and attacking the president. The president has asked Mitch McConnell numerous times to get rid of the legislative filibuster, and he hasn't. In other words, that's not a barrier. Uh, look, there are the majority of Republicans support fixing the loopholes. The president wants to work with them. We want to get something done. We've laid out a proposal to do that, and we are hopeful that Congress, particularly Democrats in Congress, will come together and actually fix the system. So I called on you now. No responsibility for the immigration problems at the border. Uh, look, the president wants to fix it. I, I mean, we have laid out a number of different uh, plans and proposals.
proposals that would close these loopholes, and we continue to be ready and willing to work with Congress to get it done. Please. Sure. Two questions by me. On immigration, what does the president want to see the House of Representatives do in the next week? Uh, again, we've laid that out. We'd like to see a permanent solution to fix the loopholes uh, and secure the border. And on no, on DACA, I think. Well, just yeah. just just on upcoming votes, yeah. is there a particular bill that he favors or a particular bill? Again, he wants to see all of the different components that we laid out uh, several months ago addressed. And if any of the legislation comes to the table that would create a permanent solution that does that, then we would support it. Thank you. And, sorry, on NAFTA. The president's threat of order tariffs, does that mean that he will withdraw from NAFTA in the coming days? Uh, I don't have any announcements on that. So Sarah, to follow up on Trey's question on whether the president believes that the inspector general's report was thorough, several GOP lawmakers today have called for a second special counsel. Would the president support a developed inquiry into the inspector general's report and into the further conduct of the FBI, or does this settle the matter for all time? Uh, certainly, this creates a great deal of concern, uh, and we're going to tune in to Director Ray's comments this afternoon. Uh, but certainly, there are a lot of things in this report um, that not only worry those of us in the administration, but should worry a lot of Americans that people. Uh, played this political bias and injected that into a department that shouldn't have any of that. To follow up on that, does the president believe that Peter Strzok should still have a job at the FBI? Um, I haven't specifically asked him that question, but my guess would be no. I'll take one last question. Sarah, Eamon. Thanks, there are a number of officials here at the White House who are reportedly eyeing the exits, um, including Mark Short, uh, Rod Shaw, and yourself. Can you give us a sense of what to expect? Are any of those officials leaving, and what's the plan to replace all those high-level people? Uh, well, I don't know that there's a need to replace them. Uh, as I stated last night in a tweet, I think CBS got a little ahead of their skis, particularly since they put out a story about my thinking without ever actually talking to me. Uh, seems that it would be a little bit problematic. In terms of personnel announcements, I don't have any to make. I can tell you uh, that I show up here every day. I love my job. I'm glad to work for the president. And each and every day, I'll pray for clarity and discernment on what my future looks looks like. Right now, I think the country looks pretty good, and I'm glad to get to be a part of that process, and I'm going to continue to do my job. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, press secretary there, saying she's praying for clarity and discernment as she determines her future there, but wouldn't uh, follow up on the reports there that CBS News has been reporting that she and her colleague Ron Shaw may be uh, heading for the exit doors come soon. Uh, but the big, really overarching story of the day today is the inspector general's report that was released condemning the FBI and the way former FBI Director James Comey handled the Clinton case. There was also a lot of questions taken on immigration. Uh, the press secretary saying that the president wants a permanent solution on immigration and the crisis there. Uh, but really the big focus today is exactly how the inspector general's report was received. It reaffirmed, she said, Sarah Huckabee Sanders said, the president's suspicions about Comey's conduct and the political bias about some of the members of the FBI. That was their takeaway. We're also following James Comey, who released an opinion report just a short time ago uh, on the New York Times saying that this report, the inspector general's report was wrong, but that it was good for the FBI. Paula, I want to bring in CBS News Washington correspondent Paula Reed. Paula, I want to actually start off with the inspector general's report. Uh, give us a sense of exactly recapping the White House's position and were you really surprised by their take today? No, they tried to argue that this report vindicated the president's concerns about certain people within the FBI and how they handled both the investigation into Secretary Clinton's use of a private email server and also the origins of the Russia probe. But that's not entirely true. In fact, the president has repeatedly claimed that the Clinton investigation was botched or rigged, but the Office of Inspector General report, Rena, it specifically find, found that bias did not impact the Clinton investigation, that her interview by the FBI that the president and his attorneys have repeatedly criticized they found that it was appropriate and that there was truly no prosecutable case against her. So the FBI spin today is, the, excuse me, the, the White House's spin today is that the OIG report vindicates uh, the president's assessment when, in fact, the opposite is true when it comes to the Clinton email matter. 
Paula, I want to also ask you, I know you asked a question about, it's been uh, very controversial, a lot of focus on these children who have been separated at the border from their parents. It was a really passionate sort of interaction when uh, a reporter there pressed her on this, saying, you're a parent. How would you feel about this? This is a serious question we're trying to get at. And, and then Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying the president is just enforcing the law of the country. First off, is it the law of the country to separate? And, and what did you make of her response on immigration today? Well, let's be clear, the law of the land does not require that you separate parents and children at the border. The change that has been made by the Trump administration is that they have decided they were going to prosecute everyone who is apprehended by the Department of Homeland Security who crosses the border illegally. Now, when you prosecute anyone in this country, you are separated from your children. That was a policy decision, a policy change that this administration made back in April. Before that, these illegal border crossings were typically handled as civil matters. You were cited, you were given a court date, and sometimes released, sometimes you were detained. So there was a change here in how the Trump administration approached this. They're trying to say they're enforcing the law and that this is Democrats and what this is the fault of Democrats. But what a lot of the reporters here were trying to get at is, does the administration take responsibility for its own policy and what this is doing to families at the border? Uh, the Department of Homeland Security chief, she has said on the record, Rena, they are doing this as a deterrent to deter people from coming here illegally. Again, there is nothing illegal about what they're doing, but it seemed that the White House did not want to take responsibility for the effect of this policy change, and that's really what we were all trying to get at. And when someone even tried to, to play on the fact that Sarah Huckabee Sanders is a, is a mother, do you have any empathy? Do you have any concerns about this policy? She wasn't biting. She kept falling back on her talking points, which were that this is the law of the land and they're going to enforce it until Democrats do something about it, but it cannot be more clear about this. This was a policy decision by the Trump administration to approach illegal border crossings as criminal matters. Now, a lot of Trump supporters, they'll be happy about that. They believe that that is a crime and he should be prosecuted, but some people definitely have some difficulty with the morality of separating parents from their children. I want to also ask you, she came forward about EPA Chief Scott Pruitt, who's had a host of <laughs> allegations around him, but she actually said that they may have some concerns. Is that a change from the White House's take? What'd you make of that? I would describe that as a micro change, a micro movement uh, in their uh, historically uh, pretty robust defense uh, of the EPA chief. I mean, he has a laundry list of, of investigations and controversies. And, and the general question is, what exactly does it take to get fired? Um, and so far, they say they have no personnel announcements. But again, they seem to be moving, even if just a little bit, uh, to become concerned about some of the things that have been raised uh, about his behavior. And also, she was asked about CBS News' original reporting last night that she may and her colleague may be leaving Leaving, exiting the White House at some point. She didn't deny it. What did you make of no. her response on that? You hit it, Rena. She did not deny it. She took some cheap shots at our colleague, uh, Jackie Alamany, who broke that story, who had that scoop. She tried to suggest that she was out over her skis, but she did not deny it. She has not denied it, and neither has her colleague, Raj Shah. Well, they have been very upset about this. A tweet